Good morning. Welcome back to the online classes National English Medium High School Chitradurga. Dear students, in the last session, we are studying in the chapter Metals and Non-Metals Part 1 about the physical properties of the metals and non-metal through which we can clarify or classify whether the given substance it is a metal or the non-metal. In the terms of we are studying some exceptions will be there so that we can't judge whether it is a metal or the non-metal. So the best tool in order to classify the substance into the metal or the non-metal it is the chemical properties of the metals and non-metals. So today we shall deal about what are the chemical properties of the metal, how it is unique for each of the metal. So under that one subtopic today I am taking what happens when metals are burnt in the air. So here air is referring to the oxygen that is how the metals will react, how the metals will behave in presence of the oxygen. You might have seen around you if the metal burns, different colors will be formed. And also you might have seen the crackers. In the Deepavali, you might have seen the cracker. So when we burn the cracker, there will be dazzling flame. Because that aluminum powder, what it is present in that crackers, it will combine with the available oxygen and it forms the dazzling flame. So if we take a magnesium ribbon, a magnesium ribbon, if it burn in the presence of air, that is oxygen, it gives rise to the powder, it is known as the magnesium <coughs> oxide. So, and some metals, they will not burn at all at an ordinary room temperature. So, some metals are ready to be catch the fire. So, whatever the metal it may be, the behavior it is different and also the level of reaction also it differs from metal to the another metal. So, here the metals if they react with the oxygen, one common thing what we can see is when the metals reacts with the oxygen, it forms metallic oxides. So, this is the general formula what we should remember. That is, whenever the metals reacts with the oxygen, it forms the metallic oxide. So, just now one example I shown you. That is magnesium. Magnesium, no doubt, it is a metal. So, when this metal, it reacts with the oxygen, it gives rise to magnesium oxide. So, here the equation is not balanced. We have to balance the equation. That is the LHS, it should be equivalent to the RHS. So, here magnesium is one molecule. Here also magnesium, one molecule. Oxygen here it is two molecules. That's why we have to balance the two here. So, two molecules of oxygen. Now, it has become two molecules of magnesium. Again, we have to balance the LHS. So, here two magnesium. Here also two molecules of magnesium. It means that two, when two molecules of magnesium combines with one molecule of oxygen, it gives rise to two molecules of magnesium oxide. Another example, copper, when it is burnt in the air or heated in the air, it gives rise to cupric oxide. So, CuO. No doubt here also copper it is a metal. When it burns in the air in presence of oxygen, it gives rise to cupric oxide. This is also one of the oxide form. Another good example is aluminium. This also, when the aluminium, when we burn in the air, it gives rise to aluminium oxide. That is Al2O3. The formula is Al2O3. Here also, the equation is not balanced. So, two molecules of oxygen. Here we have to write two cupric oxide. Again, now we have two copper. Here also two copper. Now here, one is odd and one is even number here. O2 and O3. The best method is to cross multiply by balancing the equation. We have to maintain the, we have to follow the law of conservation of energy. That is the LHS should be equal to the RHS. So here, 2 and 3 are there. That's why we have to put this 3 number here. Here, 2. So that it has become 2, 3 is a 6. Here also 2, 3 is a 6. 2, 2 is a 4 aluminium. That's why here we have to write 4 aluminium. So this is how we have to balance. So in these equations, in this example, experimental example, what we can observe common thing is whenever the metals are reacting or burning in presence of air, we are getting respective metallic oxide, respective metallic oxide. So, magnesium oxide, cupric oxide, aluminium oxide. So, the general formula what can be followed is metals when it react with the oxygen, it gives 
the main uh, concept what now we have understood is any metal any sort of metal when it reacts with the oxygen it gives rise to metallic oxide and this metallic oxide always they will be basic in nature so almost all the metallic oxides they are basic in nature that is uh, these metallic oxide magnesium oxide tungsten oxide aluminium oxide zinc oxide so all these they will show the basic in nature but some metals when it reacts with the oxygen they will form the metallic oxide and such metallic oxide they will show or they will exhibit both basic as well as acidic so two very classical example in respect to this behavior of the oxides here i'll show you one is aluminum oxide so aluminum oxide it reacts with the hydrochloric acid that is the these oxides that is the aluminum oxide as well as the zinc oxide it reacts with the both acid as well as the base so here we should take one example aluminum oxide here also are written aluminum oxide it reacts both with the acid as well as the base but other oxides just the what i showed you aluminum oxide and then uh, uh, there's a uh, cupric oxide then it cupric oxide as well as uh, uh, other oxides zinc oxide magnesium oxide they will show only the basic in nature so that they will not react with the base only they will react with the acid but aluminum oxide and zinc oxide it will react both with the acid as well as the base so let us see what will be the reaction and what will be the equation so aluminum oxide when it reacts with the hydrochloric acid it gives rise to aluminum chloride plus water so the product form is aluminum chloride so we have under already has studied about the decomposition displacement double displacement so let's try to follow so what is the basic oxide one is the acid so when the base and acid reacts together the product form will be the salt and water so aluminum chloride obviously it is the salt liberating the water molecule so also this aluminum oxide when it reacts with the sodium hydroxide it gives rise to sodium aluminate na al then o2 plus water molecule so this is how the aluminum oxide it reacts both with the hydrochloric acid that is acid sodium hydroxide that is the base giving rise to the salt and water so another example this is the example number 1 another example number 2 i'll give you a salt and zinc oxide so you try yourself how will the equation will be for with the hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide so these are the two classical example for the oxides metallic oxide they behave or react with both acid as well as the base forming salt and water so together we generally we can write metallic oxides that reacts with the both acid and base gives rise to salt and water so such oxides metallic oxides they are called as amphoteric oxides amphoteric oxides so here ampho or ampi refers to both both means here the metallic oxide that reacts with both acid as well as the base such metallic oxides are called as the amphoteric oxide very classical example for this is the aluminum oxide and zinc oxide so one example i have shown you another example you should write now let us balance this one so here alcl3 is there that's why we have to write here 3 hcl now here three uh, i have uh, sorry so here al2o3 here uh, six hydrochloric acid it will become then here 2 alcl3 that is 2 3 is a 6 here six hcl then here we have to balance 3 h2o because here 3 twos are six here six hydrogen here also six hydrogen now it is the balanced equation then here also you should balance here it will become 2 sodium hydroxide 
and here also two sodium aluminate. So now this is the balanced equation. Next year, assignment is zinc oxide. We should uh, try to write the equation or the reaction between zinc oxide and hydrochloric acid, zinc oxide and the sodium hydroxide and see what the equation you are getting and then try to balance it. Next year, most of the metallic oxides are called they are basic in nature and only the few exception is these two are the non amphoteric oxide that reacts with both hydrochloric acid as well as the sodium hydroxide. But if there are some metal there that will show very highly vigorous reaction. By looking at this example, we can conclude that the, even though all metals are reacting with the oxygen, some metals will show very vigorous reaction. Some metals will not show any reaction at all. Some metals will show very slow reaction. This means that the metals will react with the oxygen and the reactivity differs from metal to the another metal. A very good example is potassium and sodium. They will react very vigorously and they will catch the fire. Hence, in order to avoid such incidental um, cases, this sodium and potassium always will be kept inwards in the kerosene. Mainly because kerosene, it has not got any affinity towards the sodium and potassium. So, potassium and sodium, they are highly reactive metals. Easily, just if we keep it in the open environment, readily it catches the fire and it will result in any untoward incident. So, because of that, it will be kept immersed into the kerosene oil or we can keep it in the petrol also. No problem. So, this shows that the, the chemical properties are very unique for every element and this is considered as the best tool in order to classify them as the metal. So, hope students you have understood today's session. In the next session, we shall be